In this scenario, we are going to see how to configure a name and extended access list. Again, the difference between name and access list and the numbered access list is that if you want to arrange or rearrange rules in the access list in a numbered access list, you have to clear or you have to delete the complete access list. And this is a big problem sometimes. Whereas in a name and access list, if you want to, to, to delete uh, a rule or rearrange rules, there is no problem for that. You can always do it without being obliged to delete the complete access list. Uh, now we're going to see how to configure a named extended access list. And this example, we're going to work it between from host one, host two, to host three and host four. For example, I'm going to uh, create a named extended access list such that it allows traffic from host one to host three, but denies traffic from host one to host four. Similar thing, it will allow traffic from host two to host three, but deny traffic from host two to host four. And also I would like to see all the matches, all the packet matching against the deny rules. That's why I'm going to also configure the deny rules for this specific extended access list. Uh, as we know, if a rule is not specified, the packet who does not find a match, a permit, for example, uh, will not be allowed to, uh, will not, will be simply denied because we have an implicit deny at the end of it, every access list, especially for those packets who do not, who are not permitted, who do not find the permit statement in the access list, they will be simply discarded. So for us, for testing purpose, we would like to see those packets, all the number of matches against the deny rules in the access list. So we're going to configure us all the deny rules. The first thing I'm going to do is to configure the access list, but we need to locate where, which router the access list needs to be configured. Uh, we come back to the previously, what we said previously, an extended access control list should always be configured close to the source. So in our case, the router RTA will be the ideal place where to configure this name and extended access list. Uh, we start, we go to RTA, first we need to check if there is any access list configured on the router, no access list, we can have a look at the uh, configuration file of the router, so everything is okay, so we start configuring our name and extended access list, IP, access list, so I type question mark to see what are the options available, uh, I will make this access list extended, so I type extended and then I'll provide it with a name, for example, ACL2. ACL2, this is the name of the extended access list that I'm going to configure on router RTA. Now, the purpose of this access list is to permit uh, the traffic between host 1 and host 3 so what kind of traffic so I, I just want to enable the complete ip protocol so i say permit ip then i specify the host 172.16.0.1 and the destination will be host uh, 172.31.0.1 so like this i'm permitting traffic between from host 1 to host 3 and also I'm going to deny traffic between host 1 and host 4 172.31.0.2 sorry right similarly I'll apply the same thing for host 2 I'm going to permit the traffic all IP traffic from from host 2 172.16.0.2 to host 3 but I will deny all the IP traffic from host 2 to host 4 right okay now I can check again my access list I can check my access list so permit uh, the traffic from host 2 to host 3 deny traffic from host 2 to host 4 permit traffic from host 2 to host 3 deny traffic from host 2 to host uh, 4 
once I'm done, I go back again to the diagram and say, where shall I apply this traffic? So the best uh, interface where the uh, access list need to, needs to be applied will be the facet and zero slash zero in the inbound direction. So I go back again to router RTA, I go to the fast Ethernet 0 slash 0, and then I'm going to apply the uh, name and access list ACL2 in the unbound direction. So it's going to filter all incoming traffic through the fast Ethernet 0 slash 0 interface. I apply it like this. Again, I type question, the, um, I type the access list to display the access list so all the rules are displayed correctly. Uh, the next step, of course, after this, we need to check or to do testing and test if the, the traffic actually is permitted or denied based on the rules that is going to be applied. So first I go to host one. From host one, I will be pinging to host three, right? So from host one, I'm going to ping host three, which is 172.31.0.1. Well, it works fine, no problem, but I'm going to ping host 4 and I'm expecting the packets to be discarded because they will be denied access. So this is what happens. So our access list is working fine. I go again to host 2. So I'm going to see host 2. From host 2, I'll be pinging to host 3. Does it going to allow the packet to be forwarded or to be uh, uh, to reply? Yes. There is a reply, so the packets are allowed from host 2 to host 3 based on the access list that we have configured. What about from host 2 to host uh, 4? Well, the packets are denied. Now I want to go back to router RTA and see the matches, if there are any matches. Right, five matches actually between host uh, 1 and host uh, 3 because we send five. Uh, ICMP call request and expect five ICMP call reply packets. So we have five matches. The same thing between host three, host two, and host uh, three. Now, as you notice here, uh, when you ping between host uh, one and host four, it's denied. So we have eleven matches, and here also it is being denied, and we have eleven matches, which means that packets are matched against the rule in the access list whether they are permitted or denied so the access list is uh, filtering the traffic correctly and conveniently and there is no problem everything is working perfectly so this is an example of uh, an extended uh, of name it extended access list uh, well uh, we can see for example if i want to delete any rule for example i go to access list extended ACL2 and uh, let's say for example I want to delete the last rule this one deny IP host 172.16.0.2 I mean the traffic being filtered being denied is the traffic between host 2 and host 4 so let's see what happens no deny IP host 172.16.0.2 Host 172.31.02. Okay, I did not. I removed that rule. Now I will display the access list. Access list is still there. It has not been deleted. The rule has been deleted within the access list, but the, the complete access list is still there, which is not the case with numbered access list. Whenever you want to delete one specific rule, you have to delete the complete access list. Not only that, if you make a mistake, or you want to rearrange your rules within the access list in a number of access list again you have to delete the complete access list for rearranging your rules in the number in the name of access list you can avoid this procedure especially with the new ios which allows you to insert a rule in a specific location using um, index number for that specific rule thank you for viewing this example this is hakim adish bye